hey, 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 welcome one and all. It is time for another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. He's Big Show. Big Show. What's good, man? What up? What up? What up? How are you, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing. I can't complain. Yet. Nobody will listen anyway. Th that's true. <laughs> but hey, if y'all have tuned in here, um, hopefully it is to listen to what we have to say. Because every now and then we drop a little bit of knowledge. Uh, sometimes we just uh, like to vent. And in between that, we give our unique and, dare I say, warped takes on things that are going on in the world. And today is uh, not that different because we got a lot of warped takes to give just based on things that uh, we're seeing. Before we get started, though, show I want to do this real quick. I know in just about every episode, I tell everybody, hey, if you have any questions, comments, email us at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. Or if you're watching on YouTube or on most of the podcast feeds, it allows comments as well. That stands on every episode. But for the next couple of weeks, anybody who has something that they want to hear us talk about or you want to come on board and promote something, whether it be a place where you work, something that you do, you're more than welcome to. We can work that out with you. All you have to do is just send us an email at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com or uh, reply in the comments uh, for that kind of thing. I'd rather you go ahead and email us that way. It can be, you know, uh, mano y mano. We can, you know, get with you. The uh, comments are a little bit more public and you don't want somebody stealing your thunder or busting your groove on that. So just get with us and, uh, We'd love to have you. We 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 love people. That's why we do this. Okay. Now. Big show. You ever just peruse the web and you run into stuff and you're like, really? Or wow, or oh wow. An array of emotions can come just from the interweb by itself. Oh, yeah. Before we get too far in, also, I want to say congratulations for surviving the great Facebook outage that happened today. So I'm proud of you. Oh, wow. Was Facebook down? Oh, yeah. It was down it, all across the world. It went down for like about an hour and a half. I did not know that. I, <laughs> I was at work today. Um, my boss couldn't make it. She was ill thereof and therefore everything fell on me, which is not a bad thing. But at that point, there's no time for any extracurricular activities online. I have to, you know, put my head down and get into it. So, well, you survived for all those, uh, what they call them, uh, conspiracy theorists. They were like, this is it. <laughs> the world's going down. This is it. Wow. Okay, learn something new already. And <laughs> it reminds me of when I used to work at the school. We had the power go out for maybe an hour. The kids were in a worldwide panic because they didn't know how they would uh, do their work. And one <laughs> teacher made it real clear. Have you ever decided to open a book? <laughs> right. It, it was just hilarious. What's that? <laughs> you mean an ebook? No, actual paper. <laughs> but then I've got to turn uh, the pages. Well, you're talking about caveman school. I remember I know, those right? days. <laughs> we had hieroglyphics on the pages. <laughs> right? So, um, just perusing here. Okay, I'm going to start with the very first thing that I saw on MSN. Understanding the life and career of John Amos. Okay, Eric, you know who John Amos is, right? Yeah, Uncle Jesse. Or James. 
you know, if you if you watch Good Times. Oh no no no! You're talking. Okay, I thought you were talking about. Okay, I'm with you now. I'm with you. I was were thinking, thinking somebody of Uncle else. Jesse on the Dukes of Hazard. No, I was thinking of Uncle Jesse from. Uh, oh, John Stamos. No, no, John, not John Stamos. Stamos. That's that's what I that's what Uncle, I heard. But John no, Amos. Amos, the, the ex Kansas City Chief. Gotcha. Yes. That's that's why I figured you would know who John Amos was. Yes, you know, yes, yes. He, he he did. Did he actually play for Kansas City or did he sign with them? He was on their quote unquote practice squad back then. Okay. I think he was part of the. He played very for the first Broncos. Super Bowl I know. Team. I think he was very. He was part of the very first Super Bowl team. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I know think he does have an I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty City. sure uh, Hank Stram told him he should probably go act, which he did, and the rest, as we say, is history. But what got Never. me was th the title of the article: "Understanding the Life and Career of John Amos." Because when you first look at that, it's like, <gasps> did John Amos die? I hate the way they worded that. Okay, long story short, it does go into some things about him, how he came up with acting and all that. But at the end of the article, it just mentions in a footnote almost that uh, he and his son are putting together an autobiographical, um, not a series, but um, not a film either, just a documentary. That's the word I'm looking for. So I'm like, a docu series or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, that, I really wish they had put it that way in the freaking article or in the headline because they had me scared for a minute. We don't want to lose James yet because James right. might be next. <laughs> is, yeah, JJ is still alive. Yeah, I see him on TV every now and then. Yeah, I think uh, with the exception of Esther Roll, who played Florida, Everybody else is still around. And you know how it is. We, we've lost a lot of celebrities in the last few weeks. We... So, so you, you, you had mentioned that he played for the Denver Broncos. And I was like, no, he didn't. He, he was signed for the Denver Broncos for two days. They uh, so, signed him. So basically they his him. signature belonged to the Denver Broncos. Yeah, they signed him, and he couldn't run the 40-yard dash because of a pulled hamstring, and they released him the second day of training camp. Okay. Because I had never heard that. And then he went to play for the, in the UFL, the CFL, and the ACFL. And then in 67, and then in 67 he signed a free agent contract with the Chiefs. And Hank Tram told him, you're not a football player. <laughs> you're a man who's trying to play football. So he was cut by the Chiefs and then returned to the Continental Football League and played for the Victoria Steelers. Hmm. It sort of makes you wonder because a lot of these guys, if they didn't turn to acting, would we even know who they are? Uh, John Amos is one example. Carl Weathers who we did just lose a few weeks ago, is another example. I knew that he was a Raider, but that's because of the history of the Raiders to the average person that doesn't care about that team. Yeah, a lot of people didn't know that. Yeah, they wouldn't know that he played football. Um, let's And let's be honest, if Carl Weathers wasn't in the movie Rocky, nobody would ever knew who he was. Because everything, everything after Rocky, it was because of Rocky. Oh yeah, that, that that's what Action put him Jackson, on the map. Jackson, the Predator, and everything else that came after that. Even Happy Gilmore. Yeah, but Did, yeah. ain't that the one where he had the fake hand? Yeah, the yeah. Bad, yeah, yeah. The, the the gator bit it off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now I, I won't go as far as to say you know Jim Brown. We all knew who Jim Brown was. He yeah, Jim Brown was a retired football, football player before yeah. he became an actor. Yeah, same and his with, acting uh, wasn't that great. Same with O.J. Simpson. Yeah, yeah, I can agree with that. You know, but but there are there are some athletes who are better known as actors than they were as athletes. 
Uh, I forget the guy's I mean, name comes to mind. You remember that show Webster? The dad? Papadopoulos? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alex Karras. That was his name. He played. He was an offensive lineman, right? Yes, he was. But I would have never known it. Thought he was an actor. Period. Well, you know, modern day, one of the best ones, The Rock. <sighs> you know, his career didn't get past college, so still, he was part of one of the biggest college football teams on the country. That's right, Hurricane. he was part of the U, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Played with Warren Sapp. Yeah. So, I mean, and then if you wouldn't, I mean, he got his acting chops in an athletic acting field, the wrestling, but still. Yeah. So, yeah, th th this, th you start to add it up. There's quite a few. <sighs> and as I was perusing the web also, I noticed some other things. And this isn't particularly towards one article, but several. Have you noticed the inordinate amount of remakes that are coming out? I have. I mean, it is just overwhelming now. They're, they're remaking The Crow. Why? I was getting ready to say, which wasn't, you know, and, and no disrespect to anybody who's a fan of the movie. I could take it or leave it when it first came out. And now I find out that they're remaking it. And, you know, uh, the original uh, chick that was in the movie is up in arms about it because she said that the guy that's playing it looks like he's in a dirty, grimy uh, universe. Didn't the original character look kind of dirty and grimy? Just me? Yeah, the... The original character was Brandon Lee, Bruce Lee's mm -hmm. son, and he was uh, shot during the filming of it. So he didn't actually finish the making of it. That's true. Um, and then I think the second crow was even worse. That's right. There was a, uh, I don't even remember if it was a direct to DVD or just really low budget movie. You're right. It was horrible. I remember seeing that, I want to say, late at night on either the Sci-Fi Channel or one of those uh, streaming platforms that shows all the B-movies, and it was horrible. But not just that. Uh, Roadhouse, they're remaking it. It actually comes out at the end of this month, and it's not going to be... Isn't that going be... to be a series, not a no, movie? No, it, it, it's a movie. Oh, okay. But it's going to be on uh, Amazon Prime, I believe. And the director of this remake is boycotting it because he feels that it should be in theaters. Now, I'm thinking that you should have, you know, had that squared away when you signed the contract. But that's another story for another time. Um, Liam Neeson, not to be confused with Leslie Nielsen, or is he? He signed to play in The Naked Gun. Found that out today. I'm like, really? The dude from Taken? Yes. Qui-Gon Jinn? He will find you. And he will make you laugh. Because he's going to be in The Naked Gun. The remake. And I, that one... I was telling my wife about that, and um, she's like, can he do a comedy? <laughs> and I did mention one, uh, and it, he wasn't really the comedic tone in it. You remember um, the A-Team? He played Hannibal. Uh-huh. It was actually um, Rampage, Jackson, and um, Bradley Cooper that were the comic relief. But yeah, did he play Hannibal yeah. in the movie? Yeah, that was Liam Neeson. You didn't hmm. know that? No, I mean, I just I was I was picturing the original, and then when you said that, I started thinking about the movie, and I was like, "Damn, you're right." Yeah. By the way, 
that was a that was a good movie. That you know, I, so I'm not crapping on every remake out there. Some of I them thought actually, that movie was trash. You thought that movie was trash? Yeah, I had no problem with that movie. It was trash. Um, what's another one? Oh yeah, the Fall Guy. They're remaking the Fall Guy. You remember that with Lee Majors? Mm-hmm. Now, well, I don't know why. I seen the preview too. That's gonna be trash. It's like uh, Hollywood doesn't have a new thought in their brain. Well, I've I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Hollywood doesn't want to. The people in charge are happy in their suits and ties because they know they get people in the seats just by putting out remakes, rehashes, no, sequels. Don't. No, they don't. They end up on streaming platforms because nobody's going to the theater. Still because... guarantees them money. True, but not like a theater. No, They're getting the piece but, of subscribers money. Yeah, kind of like the NFL. You know, they don't want to take the NFL chances, though. The NFL makes more money with the with the butts and the seats in each stadium. Yeah. They're getting a crumb from the streaming platform. Now it's a big crumb, but still, it's not what it could be coming out in theaters. Yeah, but you just gotta get them to take chances. There's I guarantee you, there's so many people that have fresh ideas, their script ends up the They're bathroom. remaking Twisters. Right. I forgot about that. Yeah. I guess the twist on it is the woman in it is the daughter of Bill Paxton. And I guess character. it's not a remake. It's a sequel. Yeah. Because the first one's called Twister. This is called Twisters. Plural. Well, yeah. Let me, if you want to put it that way, uh, there's a Star Trek 4 coming out. So, but that was the reboot with the youngins, right? Yeah. 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 So, so they're coming back again for a fourth time. Um, wow. I mean, I would just, I would like to see what a studio can do off of original content just for one year. Even take novels. Mm -hmm. really good novels and make movies out of them yeah i mean if you're gonna remake something make a movie version of bestsellers and i'm not counting dune people no 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 uh i mean but you can because that does that does correspond but but know. it's also a remake well oh yeah and and it's a it's a remake and a, a continuation. Continuation. It's a remake of a remake, by the way, because the second Dune is coming out as well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Hollywood, if you can hear us, be original. Yeah, they don't care about us. TV is a good example. Young Sheldon. I mean, great show. That or The Big Bang? Both. Young Sheldon is a phenomenal show. Okay. And actually, this is his last season. I'm going to let you speak on that because I never watched Young Sheldon, but I watched Big Bang. And I was a Big fan Bang, of Big Bang. Phenomenal show. Yeah, Young Sheldon is great because you get to see uh, uh, what made Shel the older Sheldon, you know, how he was with his brother and sister and his Meemaw and all that stuff. So it's a, it's a good show. It's definitely... It's just as funny as uh, Big Bang Theory. See, I have an aversion to shows with children in it. Don't ask me why. I don't know. But it's not, it, it's not like that, though. I mean, because if you think of the older Sheldon, he was a child in a grown man's body. Very true. Very okay, true. so now, now picture a grown man in a child's body, and that's what young Sheldon is. One of these days, I might give it a chance. What season are they on on that? 
I think it's season seven or eight, and it's the final season. Final season, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it's um, it's pretty funny. Perusing CBS.com or uh Paramount, I might uh might give that a chance. Do you By have HBO way, Max? The reason why I brought up I don't have HBO Max. But I know that it's also on CBS.com. But the reason why I brought it up is because one of the headlines on the interweb here was Young Sheldon is getting a spinoff. We were talking about sequels and remakes mm -hmm. on the TV What's the side. Of? All these shows get spinoffs. How many N NCISs and CSIs are there now? Go back to Young Sheldon real quick. What's huh? the spinoff? Uh, of Young Sheldon? Yeah. It doesn't have a name, but it's going to be based on the uh, brother and his wife. Is it, okay. is, is it a girlfriend or a wife? Because I don't watch it now, so I don't know. Did okay. they get married? That, that could that could that could that that could be all right, I guess. I mean, it depends. It have to be tastefully done, because his brother was just a pop mark in the in the original, you know, in Big Bang Theory, along with his sister. Yeah, but you get to know more in in Young Sheldon. But like, so going back to that real quick. So like, I'm a you know, I grew up watching Roseanne, right? Uh huh. So you know that. Uh, in Big Bang Theory, uh, Leonard was in Roseanne. Sheldon's mother in in uh, yeah, the guy uh, that played Leonard. she played Aunt Jackie in yeah. Roseanne. What's cool about Young Sheldon is Young Sheldon's mother in that show is the real life daughter of Aunt Jackie. Wow. Talk about six and, degrees of separation. So, so their mannerisms are really similar. So if you go back to watch the lady that played his mother in Big Bang Theory and then watch her actual daughter's mannerisms, it feeds into it. So being a fan behind the fan is kind of cool. Hmm. That is interesting. Uh I don't want to say the wrong word lineage, but uh, like I was saying before, six degrees of separation and how that's all intertwined. And oh, yeah. When you mentioned Leonard being on Roseanne, I do remember that because he was on there for a, a good while. Yeah. And then Darlene, who was the daughter of Roseanne, also played one of Leonard's love interests in the show Big Bang Theory. I do remember that. Yeah. You know, so. Um... Yeah, so it's like the same. It it was all big circle. So it's it was kind of cool for me. So, oh. um, oh my, here's one for you. I'm just gonna throw it out there. You watch any Bond movies? It's been a while since I've watched them. I I don't. I didn't like the the last Bond character, the guy that played him. He 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 rapidly grew on me. I didn't mind him. I hated the way they went out though. But uh, the article is, which James Bond theme song is the best theme song? So I was just curious on which one you think would be the best theme song. It may not be the Sean. best Bond movie for you, but the theme I song thought, from that movie. I thought the theme songs were all the same. No, what, what they're talking about is the opener, which is usually done by some big name band or singer. Uh, not not necessarily the uh, James Bond mu theme music. Yeah, that's what I was singing, but I I wouldn't know. I, I'm I'm. For example, uh, and this wouldn't be on my list, but uh, what's her name? Adele. She did Skyfall. Um, I, I haven't didn't watch it. You never watched Skyfall? Because mm -mm, I don't like the that. Best thing. one with Daniel Craig. I don't like him as James Bond, so I just don't watch it. Okay. What don't you like about him? I just he's he's not the, he's not Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> he's not Sean Connery. <laughs> I mean, that's just... true. And, and that was the knock on him, you know, coming in, coming into it. Um, I, I will say this: he proved himself to me, and and I loved what he did with the character. Again, I just wish that he didn't go out the way he did. I'm not going to give it away for people that haven't seen it, but. Um, 
shitty ending for the series. They could have did much it's like, better. It's like Sean Connery did so well with it, and then Pierce Brosnan picked up the torch and did just as well. You know what I liked about Pierce? He was a perfect mix of Sean Connery and um, who was the one right after Sean Connery? Roger Moore. He could do the humor, but you knew when it came time for him to do, to, to do the job, he was serious. You knew that he, if, he was try, if he was out to assassinate somebody, he could get it done. And, and that's what I got from Sean Connery's character. I didn't really get that from Roger Moore. It was just a little bit too tongue-in-cheek all the time. Yeah, I never... I mean, I guess Roger Moore was okay. If I had to rank them, it would be Connery, uh, uh, Brosnan, Moore, and then Craig's at the bottom of the list. Don't forget about Timothy Dalton. Too many people sleep on Dalton. Didn't like him as James Bond. He's not even on my list. Was he too serious for you? I just don't like him. Just because I think there's also George Lazenby or some shit like that. Is the yeah, other? Well, he got he only got one movie, so yeah. Well, how many did Timothy Dalton get? Two. Yeah. See, that's probably why they're not on my list. Because. What Connery had like a, a thousand, and Chris Brosnan had at least five or six. Yeah, and then Craig, what he has two or three. Daniel Craig has four. They've actually done four movies with him yeah. as James Bond. Uh, Casino Royale, followed by Skyfall. Oh no, actually, there's he's got more than that. Casino Royale, then it was Quantum of Solace, then Skyfall, then um. God, I forget the name of it. And then No Time to Die. So it'd be five. Hmm. Huh. I'll and take I, your word for it. And I forget that fourth one's title, uh, but it was the one that introduced uh, Blofeld, which was played by uh, Christoph. Uh, I forget his last name. He plays a good bad guy. But again, that last yeah, he's movie. Done, he's done five, like you said. Casino Royal, Quantum of Solace, Skyfall, Spectre. Spectre, and then thank you. No Time. No, no time, time to, to Die. die. No, Spectre was the name of that one. Okay. What does that say since I couldn't remember the title, though? Right. I digress. I'm going to see how many Pierce Brosnan did real quick. I want to say he did five as well. It was either four or five, because I know his first one was... Uh, wow, just Golden four. Eye? GoldenEye, Tomorrow Never Dies, The World Is Not Enough, and Die Another Day. Yeah, okay. Wow, it was just four? I swear he did five. Yeah, I want to say Roger Moore did the most of them, but Roger Moore was way past his prime on the back half of them. And it It showed. Sean Connery only did seven. And the seven is only if you count Never Say Never Again. Yep. Which technically was an MGM film. And technically Never Say Never Again is exactly, it's Thunderball. And Roger, Roger Moore only did seven. Yeah, but I would say that in Sean Connery's last one, he looked to be in much better shape than Roger Moore did in his last one. Because his was a view to a kill. Yeah. I think his best one would have been... Um... So I, I'm going to retain... Because now that I see these movies, I was thinking Sean Connery was in them, but he's not. So now I can, I can vision Roger Moore looking at these. So yeah, it would be Connery, Moore, Brosnan, and then I don't care about the rest. <laughs> Just put them in whatever order after that. Yeah, I don't care how it goes after that. I, I don't know I, why I, th I don't know why I thought Connery was the actor in Octopussy, but he wasn't. No, um, Octopussy was okay. The one before that was better. Um, For your eyes, the man only. with no, no, no. That one was good too. But the man with the golden gun is the best one because he that wasn't... was Roger. That was Roger Moore's second movie. Yeah, but it was tight because it 
didn't have him playing it too stupid. He was very serious. I guess it was because, you know, the villain was trying to kill him. So, you know, I guess you don't have time to make jokes when there's an assassin after the assassin. So, but, but I like the way he played it, but you know, I, I have a place in my heart for all those bond movies. Even the guy that just did the one, it wasn't bad. And I, I wonder what it would have been like if he had gotten a couple more under his belt. Cause he was clearly making it his own role. Even who's going to play the next one. They have not picked yet. There are rumors everywhere, but it'll never happen. Um, I've heard Idris Elba, who's too old. Henry Cavill, who's going to be too old by the time he gets to the second or third movie. Who knows what they plan on doing? They don't want to go too young either. We don't want James Bond Jr. And then how they play him is going to go a long way into how well it's going to work. Because, you know, in today's woke society, you couldn't have those movies like Sean Connery did. Because he was one hell of a womanizer. True that. I think Henry Cavill would be a decent choice. He would be a decent choice. Um, I mean, it's not like he's not in shape. He He's physical. So... I mean, because you say he's going to be old after a couple movies. He could still do five or six more Superman movies if they kept him in the role and wouldn't be too old. That is also true. DC, I'm so pissed at you. But <clears throat> we can't get away from these redos and remakes because there's a Superman movie coming out next July. Mm -mm. You didn't know that? Who's playing Superman? His name is David Cornsweat. They're not, okay. They're not rebooting it, are they? Yes, they are. Do uh, you remember James Gunn who did Guardians of the Galaxy and then left to uh, he's yeah. the head of um, he's the head of DC now the film division he's actually shooting the movie it was called Superman Legacy all the way until last week he finally finished the script and he read it once over and he decided to just call it Superman so Superman comes out in July of 2025 I think they should reboot it, but do the Calvin Ellis version versus the Kalel. <laughs> oh, that would be different. But uh, okay, so I, I need don't a black know, Superman. I don't know the woman who's playing Lois Lane either. I guess he decided to go with some uh, unknowns or relatively unknowns for both of these. And um, what is it, Nicholas Holt? Are you familiar with him? Mm -mm. Uh, he's playing Lex Luthor. Is he the know. one that played Lex Luthor in the no. other ones? No. This is his first time out as Lex. Do you remember the, that movie Renfield with Nicolas Cage as Dracula? Yeah, yeah. So was he, he, Renfield? he was Renfield? Okay. Yeah, so he's playing... He's playing um, Lex Luthor. Or for people that didn't watch Renfield, if you watched uh, X-Men Days of Future Past, he was Beast, Hank. Okay, so I was just looking at who's playing this dude. Yeah, now, they messed up when they got rid of Cavill. I agree. I mean, they should... I, I, I still feel that they should have kept Affleck as Batman. I liked his version. Um, well, it, in the Batman part, though, Ben Affleck played the older yeah. Bruce Wayne. So there's only so far you can really go with that. That, that was the thing that I questioned because it didn't really line up with a younger Superman. I mean... True, but like after the after the fight and Doomsday killed Superman in Batman versus Superman, he was much older in uh, Justice League because they had to brought they had to bring Henry Cavill back to life. Mm -hmm. 
So I can see the different versions of Batman because they're not necessarily interconnected. Yeah. They're just different viewpoints per se. But I'm tired of seeing Superman reboots. We knew how he got started. Just pick up the story with a new flipping character. Kind of like what Black Panther did after Bos you know, uh Chad Boswick died. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, the second one wasn't all that great, but the movie, the the storyline is gonna keep the character moving forward. True. True. You know, and the fact that they steered off and because you know the next Black Panther is supposed to be uh, the daughter between T'Challa and Storm from the X Men, uh, but you know, obviously, that's not going to happen. So that is true as well. Although he did have a son, it was revealed at the end of Black Panther. Yes, yes. So yes, but it was should, from should the they other want chick. to? They could do it, you know, that way. Place it in the future, you know, not too distant future. So, well, this Deadpool movie coming out. Mm. Now is gonna is gonna re is gonna reset timelines. Yes. So from what I understand, Deadpool's gonna go back into different timelines of each Marvel movie and fix it and gonna actually start. Is it called the Scarlet Wars? Secret Wars. Secret Wars. And actually gonna start the whole spin-off of Secret Wars and gonna and and since the dude that played Kang the Conqueror got kicked out. They're rebooting the villain to be Dr. Doom, who is who everybody fights in the Secret Wars. And the finale of the Secret Wars is going to bring all your favorite characters back. Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, all these characters from different timelines are all going to come back in this and fight in this particular battle royale of superheroes. Can't wait. Can't wait. Now, now Deadpool is one sequel that I'm looking forward to. It's Deadpool really three, for, yeah, Deadpool three, yeah. It's and 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 Wolverine's in this one, so I'm looking forward to that. Hey man, hey, real quick, I want to ask everybody a question before we get out of here. What sequel or remake are you looking forward to? Doesn't matter if we like it or not. Drop me a line. Let me know, especially y'all on YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe. Big Show, take us on out of here. Real quick before I do that, uh, just I know he'll never see it, but I just got to congratulations to uh, Jason Kelsey retiring yesterday. Uh, for those people that haven't seen his retirement speech, uh, it's actually a really cool tearjerker. I I, I uh, say go watch it on YouTube. But hey, thanks for watching. We appreciate you. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Tomorrow's not promised. Don't forget, kiss your loved ones. See you next week. Deuces.